Ready? Ready. Ready. Focus at the moment. Okay, guys, you can start the show. It's been almost seven weeks of rehearsal, so I'm hoarse because there's a lot to say. I just have so much that I want to get across, and we have a, a marvelous cast of 45 people, and it's a lot of people to be speaking to every day, six days a week. We were rehearsing in Amsterdam at the Schiphol airport in one of the hangars. They've transformed this place into an arena. This year we have two buildings. In one of them we are rehearsing on the ice. In the other one we are rehearsing what the audience will never see. Everything what is happened behind the curtain. Our workshop. It is the 60th anniversary show, which is the diamond anniversary. The concept is a treasure hunt. It's a treasure hunt for a stolen diamond that we chase all the way through the show. Sarah had the, the concept of, you know, trying to find this thread, and it works very well from a visual point of view, and to have the facets, the colors that are within a diamond being stolen. I worked very hard with um, Robin uh, on the actual scripting of the show. Each number is governed by one of the colors that gets stolen in the opening number, and our journey is not necessarily following one person, but we're picking up on where these colors come from within the vignettes of each number to then finally bring the colors back together that make up the ultimate jewel, which is the diamond. diamond. really kind of a goal to to have a wide variety of music this particular project entails from techno through jazz through a full classical orchestra. And we'll record that part today. For example. pressure air bottles, pneumatic cylinders pushes the horse up and the weight of the rider pushes the horse down. As you reach the bottom, automatically the horse is going up. The level of response and performance is incredible. The musicianship, the, the spirit of the orchestra. I like being eclectic and uh, breathing from here and there, so this is it. This is one of the most creative moments of my life and the most incredible project, just because I love every single part of it.
So as soon as the creative process is finished, the ideas are brought to paper, I will get uh, the technical drawings and convert them from paper to steel and wood. It's a funny thing when you choreograph because you're really dealing with invisible people at first. You have to formulate the picture as a whole in your head first. And then, then I get on the ice with my assistant Tara. And again, they, we have invisible people because it's just she and I. We would, you know, map out like the ideas of what we wanted, maybe um, the blocking, um, kind of the feel of the number. And then we would step on the ice and honestly within like five minutes she would fly around the ice and, you know, out would come like eight counts of eight. And then she would look at me and say, can you do that? I want to see what that looks like. Oh, okay. But the only way I can make up new movement is to forget the movement I just made up. <laughs> and then we'd start to kind of, you know, piece it together. And then she would look at it on me and kind of, okay, no, I don't like that. The great luxury of, of having actual people <laughs> to choreograph is that you can look at your designs in a couple different ways. And some things, sometimes they'll do something in a way where it'll trigger an idea to make me move them in a in another direction. What about if you move your body like this, or what if you, you know, quicken up the count? She always wants to add more choreography. A lot of that depends on the talent, on the caliber of the talent. I handpick all my casts, always have. We've got some fantastic skaters from all over the world. pick for talent, you don't know how they're going to mesh as personalities is concerned. I'm like in charge of all the chorus girls, so for She's regular... She's boss. <laughs> I'm the boss. But it seems like a really great group, very supportive of each other. We have an international group of skaters, they all speak many languages. We have English in common, for the most part. But what we do have in common is body language. Sarah demands a lot. She demands, she demands a lot of me, she demands a lot of her skaters. As a creative team, I, ex I expect that we all are able to produce better under pressure. All righty. Well, I got a lot of work to do on that, but that's a good start because that is really part of doing what we do at this level. She stretches you, Sarah really stretches you to bring out parts of you that you didn't know, ways to work that you didn't know you could do. It's good. It's challenging. A lot of times it's kind of fun to watch because Sarah will ask something of her skaters and they look at me like she's maybe crazy. And, uh, but you know what, in the end, she usually gets what she wants. And the skater actually ends up doing something that they never thought they could do before. I think that when you work with young talent to have them um, taste something new in, in their body that they never knew they had and you were able to bring it out of them, I think that's a, a tremendous sense of satisfaction for me when there's a personal epiphany. Sarah, when she choreographs, choreographs in layers several layers. You might be a member of the chorus, but it's not necessary that all 30 people on the ice are doing the same thing. There's, there can be like 10 groups all doing slightly different things, and it's interesting because it gives you more to see sometimes. For instance, in opening you have um, Mirror Girls, you have Crystal Girls, you have Diamond Show Girls, and you have the Diamond Men. 
and they're all doing different things at the same time. We used to work more than the boys. I mean, I'm talking about chorus, but now they work a lot. They have to work a lot. have to create space so that they can skate but still give it design and a, and, a, and we are inside of a, of a geode which I really is a concept I really believe in to be inside of a crystal geode it just seems like a perfect match for the eye This is also skating, but it's a lot more acting. It's like a movie, kind of. Besides the technical aspect of it, um, definitely the acting, the performance, working with the props. It's something new for me, and I really like that. It's like really portraying a character from the beginning till the end of the section I'm on the ice. When before, it was more maybe showing my um, skating skills. Now I have to show my dancing skills and acting skills, and I really like that, but it's not easy. There's a lot of times where you might be stood still, but in that time she doesn't expect of you just to stand still. She expects to see some form of emotion on you, your face or some kind of position with your body that looks the part. For me, it's fun because I have some stairs to climb up, some ladders to climb down from, and um, so it makes it more like a real theater show, I think. I think it's really important today to represent the caliber of skating that is out there in the world. There's a lot of exposure now internationally um, on figure skating and I think the public is quite educated in figure skating now. Years before the chorus would, none of the chorus would, would jump. Before it was more doing a kick line, doing some steps, smile a lot, but I think now the requirement to uh, be part of the show as a chorus is higher, much higher than before. So when they come to see Holiday Nice, they're not seeing the Olympics, but they're seeing the same quality and the same stylistically, the same type of performances so they can make a connection. That's what makes skating unique as an entertainment form, is that it is this unusual hybrid of athletics and um, dance and theatricality. on this show are unbelievably extravagant and quite wonderful. Frank did the costumes. The costumes are absolutely gorgeous. From the beginning, Sarah had a very strong visual image of what the show would look like. There are so many types of, of fabric that he uses and he melds and he makes, he arranges together that you would never even think of. Beautiful material and crazy ideas, nice ideas. Designing for an ice skating show is unique because you're not only dealing with artists, you're dealing with athletes, and in some cases, world-class athletes who have very specific needs uh, which are different in skating than they would be, say, in ballet or, or the musical theater. There's always the ice to deal with. The ice is always there. The ice is always cold. The ice is always wet. So there's lots to consider in terms of strong but beautiful, wearable but beautiful.
Diamonds is a big show. Diamonds is huge. 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 It's big. It's huge. Diamonds is a humongous show. <laughs> it's the largest show I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, very big. You'll see. <laughs> Diamonds is one of the biggest productions I've, I've ever done. There's not much bigger you could probably go than a, you know, 60-foot galleon ship on the ice. Nothing repeats itself. Everything you see is new, continues to be new, and then there's another set of new things and another set of new things. I imagine we're in the neighborhood of 300 costumes plus, which is a lot. From a technological standpoint, we have a very contemporary set. It's cool. It's, there's a lot of um, layers to that as well, with all the curtains and the lighting and stuff. It's, it's fun to work with. I am thinking about a um, couple of things. They um, do scare me a little bit. Some of our props are very big, and obviously sometimes you have a very small backstage area. So you're really thinking about, for example, the, the pirate ship. We have a huge ship. Really big pirate ship. Which is practically the whole entire width of the ice. 15 meters long, uh, 8 meters high. Uh, God knows how we're going to get this uh, in, in some of the buildings. And we maneuver this ship very delicately all the way around, around the surface. But we will make it. It's very exciting. It has cannons in it. We have pirates. I'm the pirate girl. Inside is a ladder, and it's black and dark and I don't see the eyes so I just have to fast go down and just get out somehow from the ship and start the number so that's scary it's really busy it's a big traffic down there but nobody sees The technical uh, choreography backstage is phenomenal. I have a crew of 14 people, but also equipment in 24 containers and 200 tons heavy. Sometimes you are playing only three days in one town. You have to make um, the setup in one afternoon, allowing the lighting to be done overnight allowing again the skaters to go on the ice at the next, next day at 10 o'clock in the morning. Everybody is fighting for the ice, and we have only one ice. You know, you think, oh, well, you know, they only have to move 23 Michael Curry objects off the ice following a ship, you know, and they only have a square this big back there. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's really an amazing um, process of organization, a who's on first kind of thing. We're not quite sure where we're supposed to get on and off some of the time. We have to kind of get together with the crew and something that still needs to be done. That'll take some coordination, but when it all comes together, I think it will be easy. Things are starting to come together now. The set changes are starting to happen. We have a lot of huge props that um, were problems in the beginning, but now they're starting to kind of come together, we're starting to work out the kinks. I think by uh, third, fourth town, we will be set and we know how to handle this exactly. Okay. All right. To be approached next week, um, we're good. Thank you very much for a fabulous third week of rehearsal. We're going on to lunch and flying. And uh, the rest of you have a great day off. It's 10 minutes, please. 10 minutes. What won't I take away from this show? Um, I've learned a lot, stuff that I will take on with me, you know, for jobs to come. I had a ball. I just had a ball. It's been a great deal of fun. This is sort of the most painful part. When it finally comes together and you see the mistakes, you have to fix it, and you have to fix it fast. I have so many favorite bits, it's hard to pick a favorite bit. To ask me what my favorite costume is, it's sort of like asking me who my favorite child is. I'd rather not say. Uh, most of them I'm very happy with.
I get to fly this year as well. I'm one of the flying girls, so that's a lot of fun too. If I was in this show, what would I want to do? I'd want to be flying for a start. It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be uh, something to remember. It's going to be a really nice show, for sure. You will try to be the most um, concentrated before the big opening night, and you try to stay, to keep it together and remember everything you just worked on for the last uh, six weeks. Everybody who's worked so hard, the costume designers, we want to make them show off their costumes the best that we can possibly do, show off Sarah's choreography the best that we can do, as well as ourselves and what we can do. So opening, it's kind of high pressure because you want it to be perfect, but we just want to make it as good for everybody else as it is for us. Recognition of what you're doing is uh, really instant. As soon as you skate and you do a jump or a spin and you hear the audience clap, it's like you, you feel like you're working hard for a recognition that is right, right there, right now. It's a really good feeling. It's an incredible feeling to be in Finale and see everybody clapping and happy with what they've paid their money to come and see, then you've done your job well. Sometimes we don't see the audience. With the spotlights and everything, it's like a wall. And it helps us a lot. If we hear that they're clapping and they're happy, yeah, it helps definitely. us to act more. The inspiration for the Finale is the traditional French music hall, beautiful showgirls coming down a staircase. I've always wanted to do that number, and now I got to do it, and it's wonderful. Finale is beautiful. It's like showgirl costume. It's sexy, and it's nice. It's very nice. We have uh, for the walls very tight jackets and big bustly skirts, and it's beautiful, but you also like to feel kind of glamorous and sparkly as well, so the finale definitely helps for that. Glamour has always been part of the heart of Holiday on Ice. I think big, extravagant, spectacular, and glamorous are probably four of the, the greatest words that apply to Holiday on Ice in 1945, in 1961, in 1972, and, and in 2003 and 2004. Diamonds are forever. I was 17 when I first joined the ice show as a performer and whether you join the ice show in 1972 versus in 2003, it's funny, much of it is the same. The, 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 the whole experience, the experience of, of performing and traveling from city to city and having one day off and doing, doing six shows in two days and being so exhausted on that sixth show and having the best performance ever, those things are, are just invaluable to, to the experience of being part of Holiday on Ice. It transcends time.